Hello, I'm Eric Carlson and I'll be taking you on a tour of America's national park areas using postage stamps, postal covers, and photos. Our tour has been arranged by Paul Lee, who is now retired from the National Park Service after more than 40 years as a park ranger and planner. Let's get started on our nationwide tour beginning with Mammoth Hot Springs in Yellowstone National Park. Yellowstone was the world's first national park established in 1872. Initially, the national parks were managed by the U.S. Army. In 1916, the National Park Service, also referred to as NPS, was created within the Department of Interior and given the responsibility of managing all of the national parks. Today, there are 401 official units of the national park system located in all 50 states, the District of Columbia, American Samoa, Guam, Northern Mariana Islands, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. A partial listing of these units include national parks, national historic sites, national military parks, national memorials, national monuments, national historic parks, and national seashores. Each unit of the national park system is set aside to protect and preserve special places related to our nation's history, cultures, and special environments. Many opportunities are also provided for people to visit, enjoy, and learn. Collecting philatelic material about the national park areas can take many different forms, including stamps, albums, first day covers, event covers, post offices, and postmarks. With stamps, you could begin with the series issued in 1934. This was the first set of U.S. postage stamps to depict national parks. Yosemite, Yellowstone, Zion Park, Great Smoky Mountains, Grand Canyon, Mount Rainier, Glacier, Crater Lake, Mesa Verde, and Acadia Park. Before the National Park Series, the first U.S. postage stamp showing what became a unit of the NPS was the 1869 stamp showing the signing of the Declaration of Independence in the Assembly Room of Independence Hall in Philadelphia. Many other stamps also honor places long before they became units of the National Park System. These include the Lincoln Memorial Stamp of 1923, the 1926 Liberty Bell Stamp, and the George Washington at Valley Forge Stamp issued in 1928. Many other NPS sites have been honored indirectly by postage stamps. While intended to honor a person or a non-park event, some actually contain background images of NPS areas including the 1954 Nebraska Territory Centennial issue showing Scotts Bluff National Monument in the background. In 1993, a stamp was issued for the National Postal Museum in Washington, D.C. It includes a line drawing of Independence Hall in Philadelphia, part of the Independence National Historic Park. The 1947 three-cent stamp honoring Joseph Pulitzer contains an image of the Statue of Liberty behind the quote. Another way of collecting National Park Service postal items is with albums. In 1972, to help commemorate the Yellowstone National Park Centennial, the National Park Service published a special stamp album to encourage people to collect park-related postage stamps. Over the years, supplements have been published by the American Philatelic Society and can be downloaded from their website, or you can develop your own criteria and create your own album. First Day Covers are another means for collecting National Park Service postal items. As the name implies, First Day Covers commemorate the first day that a new stamp is available. This 1934 first day cover of the Mesa Verde National Park stamp is a plain envelope bearing the new stamp and a first day cancellation mark. Others, like this 1934 Crater Lake National Park first day cover, include the stamp, the cancellation, and specially designed artwork called a cachet. Similar to first day covers, event covers are created to honor a person, an anniversary, a dedication, or some other special activity. Many event covers have been created for NPS areas. 
Here is a hand-drawn cache commemorating the Big Bend National Park Post Office established in 1950. New York City's first municipal airport was dedicated in 1930 as the Floyd Bennett Municipal Airport in Brooklyn, New York. Since 1972, Floyd Bennett Field has been part of a Gateway National Recreation Area managed by the National Park Service. Mailed from Letterman Hospital in the Presidio of San Francisco, this 1944 cover honors the Army Nurse Corps. The Presidio is now a part of the National Park Service. One unusual NPS collecting area involves Navy ships. The U.S. Navy has named many of its ships, such as the USS Haleakala, after the NPS site located in Hawaii. The NPS also owns or manages ships such as the USS Cass and Young, which is located at the Boston National Historic Park. Yet another interesting and challenging way to collect National Park material is to focus on postmark covers from the many post offices that have operated within NPS boundaries. The main post office at Yellowstone National Park, along with several postal stations, such as the Old Faithful Station, are still in operation. At Mount Rainier National Park, the Paradise Inn Post Office only operates during the summer. For much of the rest of the year, the building is buried in snow. A postcard mailed from Paradise Inn on July 24, 1929. From 1899 to 1950, the Mormon settlement of Gravant, Wyoming, also known as Mormon Row, in Grand Teton National Park, had a post office. Located in ranch houses, the post office moved 14 times from one ranch house to another. In 1907, Mary Budge was postmaster when this much-worn postcard was mailed. From 1926 to 1928, the post office was located in Mrs. Elizabeth Moulton's ranch house, who was the postmaster at the time. Jate, Ohio, now located in the Cuyahoga Valley National Park, was founded in 1905 to provide housing for workers at the nearby paper mill. From 1917 to 1955, the post office in Jate processed mail as seen in this 1941 postal card. The old post office is now part of the park headquarters. During World War II, the U.S. government forced over 110,000 Japanese-American citizens into 10 relocation centers. One, located in Inyo County, California, was named Manzanar. To make a home in the camps, many relied on mail-order businesses to supply items they could not get locally. Each center had a post office that was operated by both internees and the War Relocation Authority staff. Today, the site is managed by the National Park Service as Manzanar National Historic Site and has also been designated as Manzanar National Historic Landmark. Harpers Ferry National Historic Park is probably best known as being the site of John Brown's raid to end slavery in 1859. Its long history includes a post office that started in Virginia in 1799, which processed mail for both the U.S. Armory as well as local residents of the town. In 1863, Harpers Ferry became part of the new state of West Virginia. As the intersection for several railroads, Harpers Ferry was also home to railway post office trains which were designated by the train number and the initials RPO in the postmark and the initials RMS for railway mail service in the Killer Bar cancellation. Over time, the post office has been located on many flood-prone sites near the junction of the Shenandoah and Potomac Rivers. Today, the National Park Service includes a post office display in its general store exhibit. While collecting postal items related to the National Park System is fun and challenging, it uncovers many facts related to America's treasured places. The RMPL has published several books on stamps and postal history. The latest is Parks, Postmarks, and Postmasters, Post Offices Within the National Park System by RMPL member Paul Lee. Thank you for watching. We invite you to visit our website for more information about the library, our publications, and our video program.